Yeah, I want to go over a little bit where um, you get the uh, zero term on Fahrenheit. A lot of people probably don't know this. Actually, it's some old school stuff. And that's the reason uh, it's not known today. It was probably very commonly known way back when. And, you know, zero degrees Fahrenheit is pretty damn cold. It's well below zero, the freezing point, a zero of um, Celsius. It's about 18 degrees below uh, zero on the Celsius scale. Now, I just want to go over, like, what it really came about, why they had a zero degrees Fahrenheit. It was an old school method. Now, I'll, I'll pass on to you a nice little tip, though. It might come in handy for maybe some kind of survival in the future. It might be something interesting to know. Besides just like, you know, hey, a little tidbit of information, but something that could be useful for you. But let's uh, first go over, like, uh, <clears throat> there's different types of zeros on a scale. You got, like, absolute zero, which is uh, there's absolutely no heat. On uh, Celsius, it's uh, 273 degrees below zero. On a Celsius scale, on a Fahrenheit scale, it's about 460. That means the total absence of heat. You know, in other words, zero on a Celsius, when they say zero, that has to do with the freezing point of water, as you know. But where the heck does the zero come from with Fahrenheit? Actually, it's uh, it's just an old school method, and uh, what it really comes down to is um, when you took ice and salt in equal parts, one to one, you'll actually bring down a temperature. I know a lot of people, it sounds a little counterintuitive because, you know, when you throw ice on a driveway or you throw it on a, a roadways, it melts the snow, it melts the ice, right? But really what's going on there, it's causing the ice to uh, absorb more heat quickly. But if you did this inside of a container, like an insulated container, um, or something like you'd food, that store food in, you would quickly bring the temperature down to zero degrees Fahrenheit, and that's really where it came up from, if you use one part of ice and one part of salt. It, it's causing the ice to absorb more and more of the heat. Uh, by itself, the ice would only bring the temperature down to 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. Now, this is a good handy tip because, say, for instance, we're going into this mini ice age stuff or whatever the heck it is, or say you got, you know, you're, you're playing survivalist, or maybe you have to unexpectedly. As long as you got some salt, you can deep freeze food. And, uh, you know, that's that's an important thing to know because, say, for instance, uh, you know, what would you do for food um, if it was a situation where we had lots of snow and things like that? Well, more than likely, uh, probably some people aren't going to like this, but it probably would come down to deer hunting. Um, you know, Deer meat is actually one of the most nutritious meats out there. It's a lean meat, and I know a lot of people don't like hunting in some ways, but then again, you know, people are meat eaters. It's just that they just buy the stuff already um, processed from these places that grow grow the animals with hormones, and they never were had the opportunity of being out in the wild. But uh, probably the, one of the best things, though, if, like, if you're out there in the snow, it's, it's a hell of a lot easier to spot the deer, especially from your deer stand. I know that because, you know, the deer's deer are brown and, you know, the background of the vegetation in the fall is brown. But if you got some snow on the ground, it's a lot easier to freaking spot those deer. So you could be out there even trying to take them with a bow, which I could tell you, if we're ever coming down, it's like survival situation. Um, that's probably what you're going to need to do because, you know, a gun's going to make noise. And if you need to hunt, you're just going to need to hunt for food. You're probably going to be doing it in a situation where... Hey, you know, maybe you're not allowed to or something, so you got to be swift, silent, and deadly, you know. But, you know, if you're surviving, and I'm just putting this out here for some general information. It could be some really good information for, say, you want to just freeze some stuff in a deep freezer without um, owning a deep freezer. Like, for instance, uh, as long as you've got salt um, and you got ice outside and you just gather the ice up and you got your stuff packaged up in uh, plastic and you got your ice chest out there, as long as you mix one part with, of ice with one part of salt, the uh, temperature in that uh, ice, ice um, container, you know, your, will uh, actually go all the way down to zero degrees Fahrenheit or 18 below zero. Now, actually, it's a pretty damn easy to freaking conversion to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa. You know, like... Um, on a Fahrenheit scale, I'm just doing this off of memory, it goes from 32 degrees, the freezing point of water, to 212 degrees, 
the boiling point of water, you got 180 degrees spread. So and then you also from Celsius, you got a zero degree for the freezing point of water and 100 degrees for the boiling point of water, you got a 100 degrees spread. So like 100 divided by 180, you get five ninths. It's the same ratio, not five ninths going one way or nine fifths going the other way. So for instance, if you wanted to go from um, um, Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius, all you would do is you would first subtract 32 degrees, then you would multiply by five ninths. So, you know, figure that out in your head. 212 degrees minus 32 is 180 times 5 ninths, and you got 100. Um, if you go the other way, you would first multiply by the 9 fifths. Then, you know, like in other words, you would first multiply you know, to go to, from Celsius to Fahrenheit. You would first multiply by the 9 fifths, and then you would add the 32 at the end. Easy way to remember that is always to look at the boiling point. Remember... You know, I, I sometimes I switch that up because uh, do I add first the 32 or subtract the 32? Just think about the boiling point. You can always figure it out. But uh, I always keep some references around, um, you know, about uh, because I know the Canadians use Celsius and we here in America, we still pretty much. And I, I'm going to stick with Fahrenheit because actually I kind of like that concept about zero degrees being um, um, the absolute, the zero, the approximate um, lack of heat, we'll call that, the approximate temperature. Because, you know, there's no such thing as a zero temperature, like a la total lack of heat, unless you're talking about absolute zero. And I don't think anything even gets down to absolute zero, even liquid nitrogen. It doesn't even get down that far. But um, that's really for some scientific stuff. But it's a good handy tip to know that when you're talking about zero degrees Fahrenheit, that actually came about from mixing equal parts of ice and equal parts of salt to make a brine. And what that causes is the ice to absorb heat faster. Now, you realize, yes, that causes it to melt the ice on the road, but what's going on there in that situation, it's exposed to the ambient air. But if you put that ice and salt mixture in an ice container, an ice box, it would bring the temperature down to approximately zero degrees Fahrenheit. Actually, you would probably bring it down even a little bit lower than that if you get it in there long enough. It's not an exact perfect, uh, I, I, it is a perfect, I guess you would call it a perfect science, but it's actually not a, it's more of an average measurement that's zero degrees Fahrenheit when you mix equal parts of, of ice and salt to bring down the temperature. But that's handy to know because, say, for instance, uh, we got a long winter is coming up and, you know, there's problems with food and all this kind of garbage. I don't want to play no doom and gloom stuff. But, hey, man, it's a good tip to know. Just keep it in the back of your reference in your mind. You probably have plenty of salt and ice around. Maybe you won't have, um, you know, maybe you won't have a deep freezer or maybe you won't even have electricity in certain situations due to the salt and ice. I mean, due to uh, the uh, ice storms and the snowstorms and the wind and all this garbage. What you could do is you can actually make an ice box by taking the snow and ice from the ground with the salt, and you'll make a deep freeze. So if you go out there and you hunt some deer and you, and you capture those deer with your bow, you can keep that meat for many months if it's down near to zero degrees Fahrenheit or 18 below Celsius. So I figured I'd put this out as a pretty good, pretty good damn tip to know, just a short little tidbit. You know, not just a scientific fact about where it came from. Actually, that's just old school stuff. Everybody used to know left and right. And it's like a lot of different things out there. People just losing these arts on a lot of different things, whether it's from cars and points ignitions and uh, what they used to do for, with baking soda, what they used to do with uh, potassium iodine or Lugol's iodine. I mean, it's, it's like there's so many arts out there that have been lost. Um, some of this old school tech is going to come in handy someday, I think. So just a little quick informational vi video out for you because uh, if you ever have to do, um, you know, uh, you know, hunt for some deer or something like that, and it's you know they're easy to find out there in a, you know, it's a, when you got a nice snowy background, you stand out a hell of a lot better. Uh, and you can also hear them coming up sometimes. Go crunch, crunch, crunch. If you got the patience for the tree stand, and um, you know you get you can get a hundred pounds of meat out of that and. You'll survive a long time. You and your family will survive a long time. And, you know, the thing is, how do you keep that meat uh, from spoiling? 
yeah, you could say just put it in the snow, but it's not going to last that long at 32 degrees. What you really want to do is put it in an ice box with salt and mix the two equal parts of salt, uh, wrap it up in uh, plastic bags and all that type of stuff, put it in equal, equal parts of salt and ice, and you'll bring that down to like a deep freeze, zero degrees Fahrenheit or minus 18 Celsius, and that meat will stay good for many months. I, I You know, maybe it's not going to be a very popular video what I'm telling you right here, but it, it could be if you keep this in the back of your head, not to worry about or anything like that. Just keep this information in the back of your head. It may come in handy someday. You know, it's one of those things like, oh, wait a minute. I remember Synergy 7 telling me about this a long time ago. Wait a minute. It might, it might save somebody. Who the hell knows?